Hey there everyone, this is Life Rake. Welcome back to my playthrough of Risk of Rain 2. Today we're playing the Huntress, and I have it sped up because by freak accident I actually did not record the microphone at all. I was talking the whole time, I did the whole thing, then when it was over I realized the microphone wasn't even on, and uh, that happened. So, most of this video is going to be sped up because I don't have time to talk for 50 minutes straight. This was a pretty long run, so most of the footage is sped up. It's sped up to eight times during the normal thing, and it's sped up to two times during boss fights. This is to make the boss fights look uh, look better, basically, just to make sure we're not losing as many frames from going two times the speed. The run is pretty standard at the start, but this is this run gets pretty crazy as the time goes on. Uh, I go for some very unorthodox strategy, and I I really liked this run. So even though I couldn't you know have commentary for it. I may as well do post-com and have a sped-up video. So, first uh, level wasn't anything too rough. The first minute was pointless because I was on the peninsula. I got the newt altar activated, but there was like no items over there, so I had to go around the level and uh, go item hunting afterwards. So it turned out okay. We basically got all the items from the level. We go into the blue bazaar and pick up Transcendence and two Ronald's bands. This costs six white items. And the main strategy I'm taking advantage of in this run is I'm trading in items, trading in a lot of uncommon items, or yeah, a lot of common items for uncommon items. And I go ahead and grab Transcendence and Drowned now. Those are very powerful items. Now, was those six white items, were they worth two Reynolds bands? The answer is no. But... I did have a plan going in through this that it basically didn't matter. Ronald's Band is a pretty strong item. So off of that alone, I, th I thought the trade was worth it. And the white items weren't, like, too good. So I, I thought the trade was okay. Really, it's not okay, but in this instance, I think it was okay. So, so I breeze through the second level. I'm picking up a bunch of items. A lot of higher density of green items than white items, even. Not just a good, decent d density of green items. So we're gonna beat up Stone Titan now. He's not too big of a deal. I face tank his laser once because I'm a derp and accidentally teleported into him. Uh, aside from that, this was a pretty, another pretty standard fight. I don't have healing, but I do have transcendence, so it's all okay. Backup magazine's really good with the glaive. Uh, when playing as Huntress, backup magazine's amazing, just because the glaive is so strong. But the real part of this run starts after we clear the third area, and I think you'll see why. Getting this bleed and the Ronald's Band, this is looking like a pretty decent run as is. Uh, no, like, healing, but, uh, like, we're fine with just Transcendence and Shields, and that's pretty nice. We have a ni very nice stockpile of damage, this is a pretty good run so far. I'm gonna take the full 14 minutes that I allot myself to go around and pick up stuff after the fact. And... So we get through this. And, okay, through the teleporter. Third level, this was also pretty standard. I go ahead and activate the another newt altar, because I, I want to see how OP I can get. This is before I realize exactly what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to... It, it's just going to get crazy. Now, I'm picking up a bunch of fireworks here, just because RNG is giving me a bunch of, uh, of fireworks. And one strategy you can do against bosses is leave items and containers around the boss arena available. That way you can use the rockets to kill uh, the enemies while you're fighting the boss. That way you have less stuff to deal with. And you get items at the same time with a big whippity doo -dah. But uh, no, the rockets are a very helpful damage source that should be properly utilized. I do highly recommend. Uh, as you can see, the rockets there just blasted the Emble Overlord for a little bit and that Stone Golem for a little bit. It's actually pretty decent damage, not gonna lie. Now we just have to dance around Imp Overlord for a bit. Once again, I've activated the Newt Altar, which might be easy to forget because it happened at the start of this level, even though the level is going at a billion times speed. Uh, I retreated there for a bit to get my shields back. It's always a good idea to retreat to get your shields back. Because we do have quite a lot of health, it's just all shields, so... Don't be afraid when you have Transcendence to just run away from the fight for a bit if you need to get those shields back. It's very important to... St you know, stay alive. I do like it that the healing drones, like, oh man, you're hurt, let me heal you, and it's not helpful, not helpful at all. Get a bandolier, go around, 
get nothing but this one stun grenade, this was a giant waste of time, and then I go through. Turns out that stun grenade was actually very important though, because we're about to get to the crazy part of the run. In this instance, I saw the alien head, uh, alien head on there, and I was like, I have to get as many of these as possible. So I'm doing the math in my head right now to see how many alien heads I can get, because I, I completely disregard all the good items I have. I have a lot of good items, sticky bombs, fireworks, like this is all good stuff, and here I am, trading it all for alien heads. I, I, I did this. This is a run. This, this is a run I did. I did this. I traded every item for an alien head. Also got a second transcendence in a gesture, but I haven't gotten, like, the, the item equipment box dropper hasn't shown up at all. Look how long it takes to kill this imp overlord even on 8x speed. It's kind of crazy. At least you dropped the lunar coin, that was a nice one. So I'm going around the level trying to get as many items as I can to recover the fact that I just dumped all my whites into alien heads. And, uh, <laughs> oh my god, I did, I actually dumped all my whites into alien heads. That's, that's kind of a scary thought, isn't it? We're getting some decent items, a lot of it's mobility, like goat hooves and energy drinks, which is not really what I wanted in this instance, but you know what, shaped glass is making up for our lock at lack of offense for at least a little bit. What I'm really getting carried by are these drones. These drones are super mega important, and we're going to be on 1x speed for the magma worm fight, because this is like the most vulnerable state of the entire run. I have a bunch of alien heads, very few other items, the infusion's okay, but it, it's a very dangerous arena. <laughs> so, one, just like the previous fight with the Imp, uh, yeah, with the Imp Overlord in the snow area, I step outside of the combat arena for two reasons. For one is because it gives me more room to maneuver when I really need it. The second is that I actually need money to buy this red chest. I think that I can not win this run if I don't get a good item off this red chest. Or a fourth alien head. Fourth alien head would also be really nice, but no. It's not, it's not gonna be an alien head, which is spoilers, but I do stay at, outside of the combat arena to try to get myself more time to get to afford this chest. This chest costs 2,490. So, we're gonna kill the Magma Worm, and it's gonna go back to speed-up mode. We pretty, survived that pr uh, fight pretty well. Get a feather, wait around, let's see what our red item is, and the red item we get... We have to stand outside for a while, because waiting for enemies to spawn so we can get the money, it's kind of a big deal. Slowly getting there, slowly getting there. And our red item is the best one in the game, 57 Leaf Clover. So if you don't understand what 57 Leaf Clover does, it basically check anything that can proc, it checks again. And if it didn't proc the first time, it might proc the second time. Uh, it's very useful with crit, with bleed. Basically this one tri-tip dagger is actually a very big a source of damage now that I have a 57 leaf clover. It's astounding how effective of an item 57 leaf clover is. I also finally find the first equipment chest here to give us give me a preon and then totally whiff all the preons. Uh, one of the preon shots got like chump blocked by a uh, beetle. Another preon I just sent into the wall because gesture of the drowned activates it automatically so I'm not super happy with preon even though it's a good item here. Slowly get these wandering vagrants out of the way. And then we're gonna go around and collect the stuff. Oh, and this is when all my dr my dr my drones die. So the drones were a very big source of carry in the previous stage, the magma worm fight and the imp overlord fight. So them dying basically means I have to stand on my own now. And so I hope those alien that alien head trade was worth it. And the answer is it is. I want to talk a little bit about something called abstract power. Um, the deal with Alien Head is I don't think many people understand how powerful it is because it doesn't directly give you power. It gives you power in a weird way. So it's hard to figure out how it works exactly. Here we have an Ocular HUD. Ocular HUD's a lot better than the Preon because I don't have to worry about aiming it. Um, so Alien Head is special because it reduces the cooldowns of all your skills. The more Alien Heads you have, the lower the cooldowns are, the more you can spam your skills. How much more damage is spamming your skills is a very good question, and the answer is it, 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 it's very good. It's being able to spam Glaives on Huntress and Arrow Rain more often, it's actually insane how much more damage you get just by having Alien Heads. That's why I went all in on Alien Head, is because I knew we'd eventually get to this point where critical mass happens and I can just Glaive things like a thousand times very, very quickly, much faster than you normally can. 
and these glaives continuously bounce between things again and again and again, and it just stacks into this huge mass of power. And it, it's, it's amazing. I love Risk of Rain. I love it. Uh, here on the final level, I'll shut up and just let you watch Risk of Rain happen, because Risk of Rain be Risk of Rain. But talk for just a little longer. There's a small chance when you enter a stage that all of the enemies in the stage will be one type. In this case, they were golems. Uh, there's a special message that appears, and you just fight nothing but golems and stone titans. Uh, that's what we got on this level, and it's kind of rad. Anyways, enjoy the chaos. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.